Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts, like the chart behind me, which is of GameStop, ticker symbol GME. And so here in this video, I wanted to go over selling weekly covered calls, and GameStop, I think, offers a pretty good example for that. So I just wanted to take you through my weekly process. I do this with a number of tickers that I hold more than 100 shares of to make a little bit of money every week. And so here, you know, I think there are a couple things to note uh, before looking into the options table when selling covered calls. One is the current price. So GameStop closed on Friday, March 22nd at a price of $13.10. And you can see current price right around here. Also, it does look like it might be forming a double bottom here. So that is something to consider. And also earnings are coming up in the after hours on March 26th, so on Tuesday. And so that is another thing to factor in because there could be a lot of volatility around earnings that could send the stock price higher. And so for my strategy with GameStop, I do own a few hundred shares and my average is right around $21.50. So that is something I like to think about when uh, selling covered calls. Uh, but before I look into the options table, I typically uh, look at the max pain to see what the price might be ending up at at the end of this coming week. So closing the week on March 28th on Friday. And so this website that I go to is maximum-pain.com. I think it's a pretty nice resource to give you an idea of where stocks might be closing in the upcoming weeks. And so for the 28th, if we scroll to the bottom, uh, we can see that the maximum pain is 1350. So just a little bit higher than current price. And so this is for the 28th as noted here. And then I also do the same thing for the following week. Since I have more than just 100 shares, I tend to kind of leapfrog my uh, covered calls, uh, selling a covered call that expires on that Friday, which is April 5th. And scrolling down to see what the max pain is for that week, that is also $13.50. So with my average right around $21.50, I don't think it's too likely that price will be closing up at those levels. However, if there is a squeeze that could trigger a gamma squeeze, that could send the price a lot higher. So there is some risk with this because when you do sell a covered call, if it closes in the money, which is above the strike price, you then have to sell your shares at that price. And so I don't wanna do that. I wanna hold on to my shares, so I wanna be careful in picking my strike. And so now going back over to the chart here, we can look over at the options table here. I'm first going to look at the options for March 28th. And so here with my average right around $21.50, the best strike price or the safest for me would be $22 here. And the bid for that, which is the price I would sell my covered call at, is 29 cents. So for every 100 shares, I get 29 cents per share, that's $29. And so I could be selling a covered call with a strike of $22 if price were to close above $22 on March 28th, then I would have to sell my shares at $22. I don't wanna do that, but I do want to make a little bit of money each week on the shares that I have, making $29. If my average was higher than $22, I could sell covered calls with strikes up to $25, it looks like, and that would yield me $20 per covered call based on 20 cents per share times 100 is $20. Or if I wanted to go a little bit lower, I could look at a strike of $20 a share, and that would be getting me $41. 41 cents times 100 shares equals $41. And you know, if my average was even lower, or if I wanted to expose myself to more risk, I could look at some of these strikes that are lower in price, but then I might be forced to sell my shares at that price. Like let's say the max pain for the week is 1350. If price did close above 1350, uh, I would then have to sell my shares at that price, but I would get a premium of $1.40. So that's $1.40 times 100, so that is $140. So that is nice, but I could be risking a lot if my average 
is up at 2150. I'd be missing out on hundreds of dollars if I did have to sell at 1350. So something to consider there. And then looking at the next week, the following week, closing on April 5th, I can do the exact same thing, strike of $22. That would yield me $30 for selling one covered call. So that's pretty nice. And actually, if I do compare with the 28th, uh, that's actually only a $1 difference between them, so it'd probably be in my interest to sell all of my covered calls with a strike of $22 that expire on the 28th, because then I could do the same thing the following week. If I do the uh, expiration of April 5th, I am then locked into that position until April 5th when it would expire. But if I wanted to expose myself to a little bit of risk, uh, going a little bit lower than my average, I could sell a covered call with a strike at $20 a share. That would yield me $59 per covered call. So I do think that is pretty appealing, but I also do think it's important to kind of consider the chart. Do I think price could be going above $20? Uh, if there were to be a squeeze. And so looking at this Fibonacci retracement that I have here, going from the high that was hit on June 13th of 2023, that being at a price of $27.65, and then coming down to the recent low that was hit on November 13th, being at a price of $11.83. So taking that Fibonacci retracement, I do have a few levels that do stand out to me as being potential resistance. One of them being the 236 at a price of $15.56. We did hit that level here that did act as resistance. So it could be acting as resistance again if price does squeeze up following earnings. But if it squeezes up a lot and breaks past 1550, I do think that $18 could be a level of resistance that might slow the stock down. Also, because that does coincide with a 382 at a price of $17.87. So, you know, I do think that could be a notable level of resistance, also having served as this double top here. I do think it will be tough to break above that. But if it does miraculously break through $18 a share, the 50% retracement is at a price of $19.74. So right around 20 bucks. So I do think that if it can, break past these levels. I do think this one might be acting as resistance, so I do think a $20 strike is not too risky, especially because my average would only be, you know, $1.50 higher than that. 100 shares that would be risking losing $150, and I have made more than that selling covered calls over the past many months. So, you know, I would be fine exposing myself to that risk, but if I did want to consider $18 a share because that does seem pretty substantial that, you know, uh, this does look like there's a lot of resistance there. Price, if it did return to that level, it might be stopped out there. And so if I do look at the options table for, let's see, March 28th, $18, that would yield me $57 per contract. Uh, but then if I went up to $18.50 just, just to be a little bit safer, that would be $50. And actually $19 it does seem to be fairly appealing because that's uh, you know only a $3 difference between $18.50, uh, $10 difference between that and uh, $18. Uh, but I do think that you know looking at the chart, uh, I do think it will be tough to get above $18 a share. But at the same time, if I do want it to squeeze, I should have my strike closer to my average uh, and not expose myself to too much risk. Don't want to get too greedy. But anyways, that is just, you know, the strategy that I use for multiple stocks every week. Uh, but GameStop is pretty nice because, you know, I make about uh, between, you know, 50 and $100 a week, I'd say, selling covered calls. So it is a pretty nice way to make a little bit of money as I hold my shares. But, you know, those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching.